Today is the 30th of July, Friday, and it's a happy, happy day because I'm just one day away from my end of my QO. And also today's Friday, which means that after today I can rest. <laughs> I always and I always love my my Friday. I mean my Saturday because I can really, really rest, sleep, and then enjoy the Sunday morning. But of course, Sunday morning, this Sunday morning, I have the um, GM12 to coach them. But I'm excited because I want to share with them how to use this this TWB system. All right. All right. Morning to you, Colin and Henry. And good to see you, Henry. And good to see you, morning, and do Eddie. All right. Now today it's going to be a very impactful, impactful day for our MAO because it's got so much powerful information to share with you, and that's including the on the buy side and the sell side. So if you're bull, you're bullish, you should, you should be around. If you're bearish, you should be around. Okay, it's something very, very important. Okay, so a strong July month. Will we <clears throat> will we see a strong July month? Well, from the way we look at the market right now, as of yesterday, not including today. The July month seem to be very strong, so we'll cover on that later on. But the thing is this: August will be something very uh, a month to be very careful because statistically, it has proven that month of August and September you have to be careful. Now a lot of people thought that it's actually they thought they, they say it's actually October. If you look at it from a Jerry um, on a Pacific year, definitely August. I mean, sorry, October is not a very good month. But you look at it on the years and years and years of statistics, then actually October is relatively a good month. Surprising, right? Because we everybody just focus on the 1987 Wall Street crash in October or the, the sell-off in 1997. But they realized they didn't realize that actually October overall, the last 20, 30 years, is actually a very good month for buying. I'll show you statistics later. Okay. So let's let let's go into this right now before we start the Hang Seng market. All right, now take a look, everybody. This is the month of August. Look at it. This is the S&P index average over since 1950. 1950, that means we're talking about last 70 years. Oh my God, 70 years. So if you look carefully, right, you notice that the month of August actually not very good. Whether it's the past 20 years or past 10 years, overall itself, or since 1950, overall the month of August is actually not so good. So you can actually go and check back on this company called LPL Financial. You can see that. But this of course, this data is based on 2019. Uh, I can't get anyone nearer to that to get such a long statistics. But so I think the last two years, if you add on, it doesn't change the average too much. Okay. Hey, sorry, I think that I didn't share my screen. Is it? Hold on. Uh, my bad. Hey, did I not change? Yeah, I share, right? Oh, I share already. <laughs> okay. All right. So you can see that from the statistics, it shows very clearly that the month of uh, August is not the best of all months. Then you look carefully in the month of September, it's even worse. Apparently, month of September is even worse. The last 20 years, it was terrible. In fact, it's down. And if you compare it to the uh, month of the last, last 70 years, it's also down. So actually, month of September and August are not very good month. In fact, October, November, December are relatively strong. In fact, October and November are very, very good months. So if I were to look at it from this perspective itself, right, traders, you should really consider that this is the do good months to watch out for. So if the market do break down or sell off in this two months, then maybe it's a good time to pick from the bottom. You got my point here? Yes, indeed. So you look at this now, right, this is the uh, total percentage of total flows into the equity mutual funds in ETF, okay, since 1996, okay, since 1996. China not moving? Is it a holiday? <laughs> I don't know. Huh? Is it a holiday? Pauline, can you check? Or oh, the data is down. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's just take a look here. Percentage of total flows in the equity market since 1996. You notice that majority of time, January, February, March is very good because a lot of funds come in after the Christmas period. Everybody come in back to the market. But if you look at August, right, it's actually not a very good month. In fact, there's a lot of funds outflow. So recently, we see some funds outflow from China. So it's wondering itself, right, is this a start or is this actually a warning sign? So that's why, again, I want to inform you this. But again, I'll stress this one more point, is that after the month of August, apparently the September, October month to November, these three months are pretty good. So which means that actually, right, the we really know what to do if, let's say, if the month of August is terrible, then we have very good months over here to look for the buy. So which means that if let's say mathematically, if we do have some sell-off in October, August, do not panic. In fact, you should take this opportunity to buy into the market. So you heard me guys, buy. Uh. You heard me uh, loud and clear, buy, okay? 
So that is my point that I want to stress this regarding what I'm seeing right now on the charts, okay? So of course, before we go right into this and you just, oh, okay, okay, I shot the market and go crazy on that, right? Let me tell you something very, very important, okay? Is that when the bulls want to feed on the ducks, they must feed the duck first. So that's why you have this quote in the market called shooting ducks, right? <laughs> okay? So you need to feed the ducks first because if you want the, the be if you want to serve them on the serving plate, planning plate, you need the ducks to be well fed. That's why this picture shows that the bulls are feeding the chore to the ducks. Okay, and ducks will get bigger and fatter. And if they cannot really swim anymore or they cannot really fly anymore in a way, then of course this is the time whereby they go for the kill. And definitely now from March, January to back June, we've been seeing the market have been going up all the way. SP, Nasdaq, Dow Jones up by 30%. So by right itself, if the statistic is true, if you look back good again. If the statistic is true, right, the first few months of market will be full of upside. And notice that July month, usually they'll pump it up very strongly and then they will take profit in the month of August. So are we seeing the same thing right now? Well, apparently it seems to be actually, actually happening. But again, I stress again, do not really get into this picture here and think that this the market is going to uh, really, really um, crash. Hold on, I'm having, okay. Can you all hear me? Uh, I think there's some problem here. Wait, uh. Can you hear me? Seems like there's some problem again. Can you hear it? Eh? Okay, because I see my picture here start to stop already. Okay, let me just uh, put on my handphone version also. Go on, Okay, can can hear? Okay, so let's just continue then. Okay. No feet. Oh, you need to feed the no. Okay, so with that itself, right, before you go into crazy shorting the market, I just need you to do one thing, remember this, okay, guys? This is what we are seeing right now on my KFC. My KFC is a Cal flip cycle. What we are seeing right now is that there is a possible turning point that we are seeing right now. And this turning point is based on the high of this particular day. Later, I'll go into that in detail. But as long as the market cannot cross this point here, there is a very good chance the market will be not able to go up. And if the market stays below the line, then there is a small possibility that the, Dow, the NASDAQ may actually fall. And that's something that I want you guys to take note of that. Okay, so we're going to have Hang Seng uh, going to open up very, very soon. I'll come to that very shortly. But before that itself, I just want you to take note of this, guys. It's just like, you know, this thing called the Tong Shu, right? The Chinese Alanac. Now, do make note itself, right? When during the olden days, or even current now, we have parents who look at this tong shu to see to, to see the dates and to see whether the your 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 this um, wife to be or husband to be uh, is the character suit and stuff like that. But we always know that even though we are the best couple in the world, there is still a very high possibility that we will quarrel, we will fight, we get pissed off, we get angry. So all these things are all statistics, right? Still end of the day, even though the character may even suit, but there'll be there'll be still internal battles during among couples and stuff like that. So all I can say is this, everything is just statistics, okay? All these forecasts that I'm showing to you now, all these are just numbers and statistics. So if I don't tell you, you feel uneasy, right? If I tell you it doesn't work, you get unhappy, right? So end of the day is that whether you use it or don't use it, it's more like a reference point, okay? So do not go into the detail like, oh, Cal, you tell me this and then you doesn't work again and get angry at me and you do all the funny stuff. My job is to just inform you that this is statistics. So the last 60 years, last 70 years statistics already tell you about this coming August month. So very simple, very, very simple. You just take the opening price of August month, draw a line across it. If the market stays above the line, that means that the whole world is wrong probably, and then they will be buying. If the market really stays below the opening price of the 1st of August example, then we just keep on staying on the sell side. That will be the easiest thing to do. Are we clear with that? If everybody is clear with that, please keep it clear. C-L-E-A-R. Write it down. I want you to do a clear button right now. Put a clear button, okay? Put it there. All right. All right. So while we are waiting for your answers, I can look at the uh, market right now. This market is definitely moving right now. Okay. So let's take a look. OK, 
Okay. All right. Um, so have we, have we clarified? Is China A50 working? Oh, it seems to be down, is it? It's not moving, right? <laughs> okay. It's not moving, right? The China A50 is not moving, right? Getting me inside the thing is down. Okay. Uh, can, uh, okay. It's moving again. <laughs> it's moving again. Okay. Okay. It's moving. Yeah. Uh, is it? Okay. It's moving. Huh? Okay. Yeah. It's moving right now. So China A50 is kind of down slightly today. Now at the moment. Okay. All right. So, okay. So it's moving some movement and uh, look at the Hong Kong right now. Now Hong Kong, uh, this morning have gap down this morning had gap down, but now it's pushing up again. Okay, so what is going to happen over here is how we are in sure, but we know that one thing to take note of is that yesterday the Hong Kong did a doji, a doji closing. So obviously doji closing means that the market should be going into a directional move normally, right? So we have seen before when the market do a doji, there is a possibility of a directional move. Can you see that? Directional day, directional day, directional day, directional day. When I say directional day means that uh, you look at the next bar, okay? That means that when I say directional day, what I'm implying is that the next day, okay? Do you see that the next day itself, we do see a bit of directional movement? Can you see that directional movement? I draw it properly for you. This is the opening price and the market, when you go below OP, the market sells. The market go below OP, the market sells. If it goes above OP, the market buy. If it goes above OP, market buy. It will go below OP, market sells. Can you see that? So now we are actually having a market staying above OP. So by right, we should see a market going up. By right, huh? but it's still too early to call. If the market stays above OP, stick to the buy side. Okay, guys? But if the market do trades below OP, right, then you look to sell. Give one minute, huh? Okay, <laughs> I need to put my, my face in the picture. Not very bright today. Okay, got my point here, guys. All clear on this. This is how you should be doing it. Okay, yeah, indeed, it's very slow. That's why uh, maybe we should call in. Can you just check you if you can turn on other platform to see whether it's the Shanghai uh, China A50? Is it moving as slowly as it is? Because it shouldn't be that slow <laughs> normally, right? We all know that. Okay, so get an idea now for today's uh, Hong Kong market. It's very, very critical. And uh, let's look at the market right now. Wow. Okay. There's some selling in S&P 500, but let's just check the Hong Kong first. Okay. Hong Kong. Now today's Hong Kong, we need to uh, take note of some levels. Okay. Okay. So today's Hong Kong, we can see that the opening price is here. Now the opening price is between the pivot one and pivot two. Now today's the pivot are pretty wide. Okay pretty wide, well, 26,333, uh, 26,336 and 24,866. Well, this is a very, very big, big movement, okay? So my, my point is this, okay? Today, the KSI definitely is red. Can we see that? Yeah, indeed, KSI is red. So if the market stays above OP, we should look for buy, right? Above OP, we should look for buy. Below OP, look for sell. But the problem is because the KSI is red in color. So I'm going to say that likely we should see the, the Hang Seng going down to KTR minus one. Okay, I believe that Hang Seng will be going down to KTR minus one. Okay, that's my first view. Second view of this is that, right, because yesterday, today is, yesterday is a doji day, right? So you cannot deny this is that if the market stays below OP, right, and stays below OP, I repeat, uh, the Hang Seng may close downwards at a low level. Okay, this is something very, very possible. So that is the reason why I will say that traders, you need to be very, very careful with the market today. Okay, I repeat, you need to be very careful with the market today because there is a small possibility that the Hang Seng will be trading down and close near the low of today. Okay, I just want to say this up front. Uh, I'll say this again. There is a small possibility that the Hang Seng will close or trade below OP example and close below, uh, close down uh, towards the end of the day, okay? Close to the nearer, the lower side lah, by the end of the day. But of course, we also know that uh, the plunge protection team, which is Chinese uh, trade, the, the traders from the government seem to be really trying their best, their might to support the market, right? So of course, I cannot say that uh, they will be much stronger than us, definitely. So if they want to manipulate the market to basically make the market stay upwards, then of course, there's something can be done. 
But if let's say they know that the whole market now is into a selling mode, then there is a possibility to see the market trading towards the downside. So as I would say this, if Hang Seng stays below OP today, Hang Seng may likely be trading towards the downside. So I hope that you guys heard me loud and clear. Okay, yeah? you heard me loud and clear. Huh? I say that the, there's a possibility that the market, huh, Hang Seng, may be trading towards the downside if it stays below OP for today. Okay, all clear, right? Okay, so we will see how it goes. Huh? If the Hang Seng do come down and stay below OP, right? That means that there is a possibility to see Hang Seng coming down to somewhere around here. And this particular level will be my personal view will be 25,350 range. So now the Hang Seng is still trading at a high level of 25,900. So for it to drop all the way to 25,350, it's kind of like quite a bit difficult, right? But anything can happen. So we just see a look. Okay, so traders tested some all my numbers for you for today. Okay, so Hang Seng is still moving at OP price, not too sure why it's today so slow. Um, really don't understand why. Uh, we will see how it goes. Okay, is it because really the market has lost? <laughs> the only thing is this you can think of is that maybe there's a lot of selling, but because there's a lot of buyers coming in to make sure that Dai Dai must hold up the price, that's why the market cannot move anywhere. <laughs> Anything is possible, right? Okay, so you look at it now, China A50 is dropping a little bit now, so it's possible. And um, the, the thing is this, this 61 point can be used again. Uh, for Fibonacci, it can be used. So you can, if you, it may go down again to this point again, uh, 14,000. 966 it may go back down again just to test that level it is possible so we watch the market okay all right so what we have now is very clear um the markets now let's look at the u.s market now okay now u.s market is quite interesting this morning now we know that amazon came out pretty powerful news for the third quarter in a row they have a 100 billion dollar sales wow 100 billion think about this the amount of sales that Amazon is doing is really re incredible, really incredible. And I tell you this, if this will continue, right, it's not half surprised that uh, Jeff Bezos will hit $300 billion in his lifetime as the world richest man. Really, it's really incredible. And seriously, he could have reached it if he hadn't give $75 billion to the wife, okay? But my point is this, this is really, the whole world is using Amazon. Anything you can think about is all Amazon. All right, so this is quite surprising. Now for Amazon, obviously you can understand that the three quarter of 100 billion is very powerful, right? But the problem is that analysts every quarter will upgrade their expectation. So the market buys on futures earning, they don't buy on current earning. So now the, if the expectation is supposed to drop, right? Definitely traders or investors say, okay, maybe some take some profit, they will take profit. And if they take profit, right? And that is whereby the funds will sell. After they sell, 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 to a very good price, that is where they're coming to buy again. And of course, when you come in and buy again, right, that is where they are preparing for the next quarter again. You understand my point? But retailers don't do that way. Retailers will say that, oh, okay, um, let's hold on for a while and take a look. Then after that, when the price fall under a certain level, which they cannot take it anymore, and of course, all the uh, news will come in and say that, oh, Amazon share is down, this and that, they get frightened off. So what happened? They will actually cut their position. And that is whereby when they cut their position, the funds come in to buy. You got my point, right? Okay, so if they understand the simple understanding, let's let's look at the MLP for today. Now, this is MLP for the Dow Jones today. Uh, I'm going to give the number to you. The MLP for today is at um, 35,037. So, which means that as long as the Dow Jones stays below 35,037 for today, the market will most likely stay down. Okay, market will stay down. And, um, but then not to worry because there's a very strong MA very nearby. Can you see that? This is MA very, very nearby. Okay, let me just double confirm the BMB first. Shouldn't be this guy, right? This MLP. Oh, okay. Go on, man. This should be the MLP. Yeah, we go. And this guy should be the BMB line. Okay, let me just correct a little bit here and there. Okay. Okay. So the thing is this for the MA30, right? The MA30 for today, you can see is somewhere near here. 
which is at 34,800. Which means that today MA30 is at 34,800. So as long as the Dow Jones do even come down, but if once it goes down to 34,800, it will be a support level, okay? There will be a support level at 34,800 mark, okay? So if the Dow Jones come down to this point, let's say later on, if whatever reason, it, it do come down, example, if it do come down to here, I do expect some support here, okay? At 34,800, okay? Only if it loses 34,800 and something really drastic happen, only if that happened, then we may see some selling. If not in sell right, the first support will be at 34,800 first, okay? All clear on that? Okay. So we talk about this. If the price do really go down, we talk about that because there's a BMB right here. Can you see that, guys? This is a BMB over here. So the BMB is this is a very big BMB. So um, this entire range is about to 400 points, 420 points. So if it goes down by 420 points, that means that the Dow Jones can go down to 34,330 level. Okay. That is if the market go down. But then the BMB SL level and the MA30 is very nearby each other. So I kind of suspect that the market should be able to find support around here. Only if the market loses the MA30, then we may look at the BMB extension. Okay. All right. So are we clear on that? Okay, good. So let's talk about the Dow weekly chart. The Dow weekly chart, very surprisingly, you can see the Dow weekly chart uh, is still firming itself very nicely on the short term trend line that I draw. And as long as the short term trend line is not breach, all right, we can look up. Now, let's say today there's some selling and the market close below the short term trend line. Is it time to sell? Well, if you based on history, right, the last time when we saw this, where the market actually closed below the short term trend line, the next week the market really sell down quite a fair bit. Can you see that? The, the next week the market really sell down quite a fair bit. But after that, the sell right, the market will rebound. The market will rebound. So I will I find out realized that maybe the plunge protection team from USA will come in again also. So even today, if you close down negative, next week itself there will be some selling, but then after that, the market will buy up again. <laughs> okay. So that is whereby you can expect to see something like this that may happen. But of course, there's another story called the boy who cried wolf. If the boy who cried wolf cried too long already and it's always seemingly like that, right? Then of course things sometimes the, the villagers may not come to sell, uh, the, to save, sorry. If the villagers doesn't come in to save, then of course the boy will have, will have some trouble. The wolf will come. Okay. So let's look at the uh, market right now. This is the Hang Seng. Okay. Hang Seng is now trading below the opening price now. Okay. It's trading below the opening price right now. Of course, there's no color change at the moment, but if for some reason you guys are shorting the market, do take note of these two technical level. This is the Hang Seng technical level to watch out for. Okay, it's bouncing up again. It seems like there's some buying in the market. So the first technical level to watch out for is 25,833 because this is the KTR minus one. The KTR minus two is 25,750, so it's KTR minus two. So these two levels will be the level to watch out for if the Hang Seng come down, we should see some rebound around these areas. Okay, all right, let's take a note of that. But because the KSI is red in color, day chart on the Hang Seng, Hence, therefore, the probability of the market coming down is there. But the problem is because there's no CCYR, right? To short itself, carry risk, okay? Because you don't have buyers losing money. You need to have that to create the sell down signal, okay? So this is very, very important. Okay, so we have that. Let's look at the Dow Jones now. Okay, so the Dow Jones. Now, this is the Dow Jones and things have to change a little bit today. Okay, you get look at Dow Jones. The, oops, sorry. The, the Dow Jones now, oh, Hang Seng has shot up already. Hang Seng has just shot up. Okay. Okay. Now, um, for the Dow Jones, okay, the Dow Jones, sorry, today's opening price is actually between the two pivot one and pivot two. So by right, okay, with the KSI green, we should see the Dow Jones going higher. But because the Dow Jones, once it opens, right, it begins to trade below OP. So when the market trade below OP, Despite the KSI is green, right? Then we know that based on what we know, it will go down to KTR minus one. But usually when hit KTR minus one, right? It should actually stop and rebound. Usually, okay? I'm saying that usually we should see stop and rebound. So let's take a look what happened on the, the as the Dow Jones right now. Well, this is quite early morning movement. Eh? Oh, okay, we're here now already. Ah, okay. 
So you can see that now, right, this is the opening price of the day. And um, there's this BNB over here that basically informs trader. And this is the cage RL and SL, right? So when the market broke below the cage and this is a BNB, can you see that it's a BNB? The market seemingly like tell people like, okay, let's go and sell the market and the market ding dong, ding dong, come down. But once he hit the KTR minus one, as I mentioned earlier, it start to stabilize. Can you see that? It start to stabilize. So which means that the, it's really following the script that what exactly we will do every morning. If the market stay below OP, then of course, if the KSI is green, day chart, I mean, then of course it will come down. But when it come down, it will stop at KTR minus one. And really you can see that right now, it's actually really, really happening. Okay, so uh, if you look at it now, you notice that, right? Uh, there is a very interesting thing that is on the chart right now. If the market do lose KTR minus one, if, like, only if, and it goes down, right? You notice that the two days are our pivot two level, 34877, and our KCB 34878 uh, is very, very near to one another, very, very near to the point of almost identical. So what I'm trying to say is that if the market, if uh, the markets come down, right? This is like a law of attraction. The market will come down. If later on, if the market has any selling in the Dow Jones, I can I can say that right, nearly 90% chance that the market will pull back and come down to here, 34,877, okay? Because this is a KCB from the day chart and the pivot from the intraday chart combined together, and the two numbers actually are uh, identical, okay? And then definitely for sure this time I created this because it's already there already on the system, right? So if the market do lose KTR minus one for whatever reason later, there is a high chance of 90%, the market will come down to 34,000, uh, 34,877, okay? So when it goes there, what will happen? Now, if you are short selling the market, I will seriously advise you to take some profit here. Take profit, okay, TP. Then after that, you observe. If the market stays there and rebound, and rebound, because the KSI on the day chart is actually green, right, and rebound, then look for buy, okay? Look out for buy signal. Only if, only if the market has some drastic move, only if it goes down and stays down below 34,877, then maybe there will be some selling. And this selling can be very drastic. Are we clear with that? If everybody's clear with that, right? Please keep, uh, bless, please, 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 uh, please text this number 34877. Right, please text this number 34877. I want you to do that so that you know that this number is very important, 34,877. This is a very, very important level for today's Dow Jones, okay? 34,877, okay? Please do that now while I wait for you, I get some order. Well, today we have a lot of people on MAO, today only four people on MAO. Okay, all clear, right? Yeah, 34877. Excellent, guys. Very, very important number. Okay, so we have the Dow Jones at already. Okay, let's look at the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ, I already warned you about my KFC level. Now let's talk about my KFC level first, okay? Let me bring in up my KFC. <laughs> now it's KFC, it stands for Cal Flip Cycle, okay? Flip doesn't mean the market must U-turn. Flip means that it can continue to flip and can continue to go up and go down. It's just a technical point. Now, how do we utilize it, okay? First of all, let me explain to you how this thing comes around, right? Remember? Um, that's how we saw, we saw the statistics charts, right, about the, uh, what's the statistic of the S&P performance over the last 50 years, 70 years. So basically it's all, right, it's all about cyclical statistics, which means that what's the probability? So it's just like telling me, it's all, right, maybe you, you notice this, maybe actually on the first day of every month, you like to take nasi goreng, example, meaning fried rice, okay? You don't know it, but it's actually it's just a habitual thing. So maybe the last fifth, last 20 years or last 30 years on every Monday, you take this fried rice, you know, the thought statistics, okay? Got an idea now? Okay, so now to put it back into uh, the charts, 
I, I realized that, okay, you notice that, right? I realized that, look at the NASDAQ. It's not by coincidence, okay? Look, it, it, it's not that I just randomly did it. Look at it. Now, what I did was that I realized that the NASDAQ between one cycle to another cycle, it seems to be, you know, in a very, in a very interesting numeric form. That means that between one cycle to the other cycle, okay, it's a set of number, it's a number. Okay, so every KFC on each chart itself is actually different. I repeat, every one of them is actually different. Different, huh? So you see, what I did was that I found that this is a very interesting thing. So to put it into context, right, I actually backtested it. And the result, right, is quite incredible. Look at it. Backtest. So actually, I pinpoint know where's the bottom of the market. I pinpoint know when is the bottom of the market. And... You see that or the top of the market quite incredible right these are all repeated numbers okay of course sometimes it cannot be like deadly accurate war or sell the high and you know buy the low but it does give me a very interesting uh perception of what to look at the market now of course this one is like it's just continue rallying up so the line you see the dotted line there tells you that uh this is the pivotal point if the market stays above the pivotal point the market will stay up if the market stays below the pivotal point it's a down market you got an idea now yeah so of course not every time you pick the bottom or the top but it actually give a random good statistics can you see that okay an idea now yeah okay good idea so when i forwarded this thing and move forward right recently that's why when we do a test so on the february that we have we already have this idea already and we now we forwarded this right do you realize that the crazy part of this happened again Look at it now. On this day, which is the um, 26th of July, which is like four days ago, we already know that this particular date, we already know that this particular date exists, 26th of July. So what I tell my friends is that, okay, based on what I'm seeing right now, the KSI is green in color, means the boys are buying. I know that my KRW is only meant for PTP students, it's still blue in color. So I know that the buying will be there. And that's the reason why we know that NASDAQ will be going up. Okay, got the idea now? So, but the thing is this, when the day come on the 26th of July, the market just stopped there. Okay, I remove it again. Okay, look, 26th of July, the market just stopped there. You notice that? The market just stopped there. And then that's it. Then on the 27th of July, okay, 20, uh, yeah, on the 27th of July, the market just caved down as if that, there is this technical point to watch out for. And really, it really happened. It really manifested and the market just sell down. Then of course, the last two days, the market did try to recover, right? As you can see on the chart, right? But the thing is that the upside couldn't have enough to go higher than that. So what is this KFC level? What number is this to take note of? The number is this, the NASDAQ KFC level. One, so which means that if as long as the NASDAQ doesn't cross over 15,147, it doesn't cross, then there is a very good chance the market may actually sell 15,147. Okay, that means that as long as the NASDAQ cannot break above this uh, 15,147, the NASDAQ will sell. And now it's really selling, it's down by 300 points already. And of course, um, another thing as all students, y'all should know, right? If you look at this, uh, okay, I put it back again, okay? You notice that this is actually the, uh, this entire thing is the CCYR, right? So CCYR, we are supposed to go into a sell mode, right? Due to, based on the day chart. So if you notice this, okay, that today's opening, the, okay, sorry. The next day opening price, which is here, the next day opening price is the CCYR entry bar, right? But you notice that the moment it opens only, right, the market went up, the market went up instead. So you couldn't have a chance to short the market. So this is the CCYR. This is the market going up. So by right, on a day chart trading, you cannot short because the market went up already above the entry bar opening price. But does it mean that you cannot short if it comes down? Now, I'll ask everybody, if the market comes back down, 
to the entry. This is this is the entry bar, right? This is the entry bar. <clears throat> now, if the market comes down to below the opening price of the entry bar, it means that the two days later, if the market comes down below the uh, opening price of the entry bar, can we short it? Can we short the Nasdaq? Can we short the Nasdaq? Can or cannot? Everybody, please text me now. Can we actually short the Nasdaq? Can we do that? I wait for your answer. Can we short the Nasdaq? If the market now goes below the opening price of the entry bar, can we short the Nasdaq? Can we? All right. So Gary and Lewis and Bernard has replied. Okay. Anthony too. All right. The answer will be broom. Yes, you can short the Nasdaq. I repeat, you can short the Nasdaq. Yes, you can short. So again, let me say this again, guys. Using this indicator that I created, right? Using, you see, the point to point, I realized that we can forecast the market. So which means during March, April, May period, we already know that when will be the next day the market may, may, I say may, do a, may do a turning point. And apparently, right, we already know that on this particular day, on the 26th of July, the market may turn down. And incredibly, whether by, by coincidence or by reality, you can see that the market really come down. Uh, Eddie, CCYR, not CCRY. <laughs> okay, all right. So the thing is this, what we are seeing right now for the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ can have the probability to come down to this point here at 14,740. That is a possibility. Now, at the same time, for those uh, TWB, uh, PTP student, you know that there is a, there is a T, there is a, there is this T, TS, uh, TSCB, right? Right. The TSCB shows that there is a technical point to watch, and this technical point is 14,845. This is the technical level to watch. And um, if the market break this level, you notice that it coincides with today's uh, pivot one. And today, Crazily, it's also an inverse pivot. Now, normally, inverse, um, normally the pivot one is on top, pivot two is at the bottom, right? But today, because of some structure, the market is inverted. The pivot is actually inverted. So I already told you before, right? In my pivot um, algorithm, right? Whenever you see the pivot inverted, that means that uh, today, uh, the the magnet uh, is very powerful. So that's why this morning when the Nasdaq opened, right, you notice the Nasdaq get pulled down towards the pivot one. Let me show you to you now with the chart. Now. You see for yourself uh, the scary part of this thing here. Okay, look at it. Look at it. Look at the way the Nasdaq opened this morning. The Nasdaq opened this morning at this point, right? Initially, it went up. Then after that, when it breaks below the opening price, look at it, the way it sell down. And then look at it, the moment it come down to this pivot one, uh, immediately it rebounded. And look at the way the boys came in to buy. So it, it seems to be the boys know that this actually this level actually exists. But you notice that I did not change my pivot. It's automatically it just prong out based on the calculation. So now is that is how scary this technique is really. Imagine that the market that somehow some people know that this number exists 14,830. At the morning in the morning at 6 a.m. in the morning, our indicator is all ready to show you right, and the market nowhere to stop. And the boys really came in to buy. This is really crazy stuff. And that's the reason why I'm saying this upfront that um, if the NASDAQ really later on do breaks below the pivot one, uh, I repeat, uh, if the NASDAQ do break below pivot one, right, there is a very good possibility to see the NASDAQ coming down. Okay, because now we have the KSI that is red in color. That means the boys are actually liquefying their position, of course. But of course, if the market stays up and recover, then the buying will be pretty strong. So we do need to watch a pivot one very closely today. Okay. So of course, you want to say, Kel, can we see other indicator? Now, KFC at the moment now, I can only use it for a couple of markets. Okay. I'm going to give it to you live today. Now today, let's say it's my last day of my QO. I'm very happy. So I can show you a lot of stuff today. So today, MAO, surely two hours. Okay. I'm quite sure it's two hours long. Okay, so let's look at the NASDAQ example. That's no, right, this is NASDAQ, sorry. Look at the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones KFC is over already. The KFC was on this day. Look at it. This is the Dow Jones KFC level. 
And you can see that very, very clearly that this is the technical point. And that's the reason why recently when the Dow Jones uh, came down, it touched my KFC point, almost instantly I know that it will rebound because if it stays above the KFC point, it is a buy. See that? And because I know that the KSI, you look at the bottom, the KSI is all green. The KSI is all green. That is the thing here. That is a very scary part. How did the market know there's a technical point here? Because I use the KFC method. And because I combine a KSI, I know that the boys are in. The only thing that is not so healthy now is that you notice my KRW shows that the sellers are actually there. So go on when I show you the market breadth, the one that uh, I'll show you at the alternate market views segment, right? You will notice that the market breadth in the market is actually going the other way around. That means that there are sellers in the market despite the market is going higher. And this is a very scary sign because if any time, if any time there is a KSI turning red and this one stay red, right? Well, if this actually comes together, well, there will be a day of heavy selling. Days or days of heavy selling. So now not yet, but we always had the first sign today, potentially the CCYR. So you must be very careful on the Dow in the coming August. Everything seems to be aligning towards that. So traders, you have to be careful. So that's Dow Jones, Hang Seng. Now look at it, this is crazy. Look at it, the insanity of this. You know why I've been shopping the Hang, I mean, I've been calling to sell the Hang Seng recently. Now look at it, okay? Okay, take a look at everybody. Now look at this, this is the last KFC point on the Hang Seng. And Hang Seng after that itself, right? When it goes up, supposedly there should be a flip switch there. Initially, we go down first, we thought that the selling would come in. But because there's a KFC point right here, right? This is the point. When the market cross over that technical point and look at Hang Seng, wow, it went crazy. If you don't buy, you'll be in serious trouble. If you short, it's even worse. You got an idea, right? So after that, it's all right. We already know that, right? Since uh, 2020 uh, November, we know that when's the next flip date. So the next flip date actually is in June. And look at how crazy is this. Look at it, the Hang Seng. The moment, right, the market reached that day itself, the Hang Seng, that very day, Hang Seng plunge. Look at it, that is the very day the Hang Seng plunge. Don't you find this KFC technique is really amazing? Don't you find it very, to the point of almost ridiculously scary because now we can actually know when's the next date. Yes, we can know, which means that now I can tell you now, the next date is on the 30th of November. I can tell you that now, the next date will be 30th November. The next date, there'll be another KFC point. So the point is this, we won't know whether how low the market will go, we don't know. But we do know that there is a technical point, you know, certain part of the day of the year on different markets. So if we all know all these things itself, right, and we just do a simple one trade, one shot, one kill trade, we will rightly know what to do. Don't you find it's really scary? So those guys, if you think this is scary, please keep it scary. If you think this is scary that we can actually forecast the market, right? Think about this, okay? Please keep it scary right now, all right? S-C-A-R-Y, okay? All right, so of course you must say, Kel, where's the next day for the Dow again? Okay, the next day for the Dow will be on the 26th of December, which is post, uh, will be on the Boxing Day, <laughs> okay? So the next date for the Dow Jones is on the 26th of December. So today I'm gonna give it free gift to you all. You can that them. You guys can actually go and try it out. 26th December will be the next KFC date for the Dow Jones Boxing Day. The next day for the Nasdaq, that one's really you just have the yeah, next day one will be on November uh, November the 19th. November the 19th. Okay. Now I'm not afraid of you guys using it. And then after that, you guys uh you know come up own creation. I'm fine with it any anyway. The bottom line is as long as you make money, I'm happy for you. Okay. November 19 for the NASDAQ. And the last one is that I only created for a few market, right? The next one will be gold, right? So for gold, now look at it. Look at how scary is this. Look at it yourself. You look at gold. On this day, gold really went down all the way and the KFC date came in and gold shoot up. The gold shoot up from this point up by almost $139 on the, on the gold market. Okay, then after that, the next flip date, it came, gold shoot up again. And from this point, it went up by almost $160. So now look at it, everybody. The next flip date, when would that be? It's getting nearer. 
the next flip moment of gold will be August the 11th. August 11th, a hey, very familiar day. <laughs> August 11th. On August 11th will be the next flip date. Okay, so I don't know what will happen on that day, but come August 11th, take note of that. Now, do note these dates are based on calendar day. So if let's say it happened to between this day, it falls on the it falls on the um, if it's supposed to be, it can't be a holiday or it can be a weekend, right? That means it's the next following day. Okay, so take note of that, huh? Okay, so incredible. All right, don't you find it scary, guys? If you find it scary, please hear the word scary there. Really, <laughs> pretty crazy, yeah. Uh? Not scary, pretty crazy indeed. Yes, it's a bit of crazy scary. <laughs> right, twelfth of August, my birthday. Yes, indeed, twelfth of August, my birthday. Yeah. Um, Cynthia, Sister Cynthia, right, for KFC itself, right, it's only for PTP student. Yeah, because it's so crazy and so scary, right? We cannot give it to non-PTP student because we're scared that you anyhow use it. But because to be fair to you guys, don't worry, I will just show it to you periodically on the day itself so you all can actually utilize it, okay? Because after so much discussion with my team members, we realized that KFC is good to use, but people may not use it properly and they get themselves flushed by the market. But to be fair to all of you guys, we will still show you the KFZ dates on that particular day so that you can try to you know use it. Oh, sorry, uh, Sister Cynthia, I need to be uh, upfront with you because we don't want people to use, you use it blindly and then they get hit by the market. Then after that, we have another barrage of unhappiness again. So do note again, so the next day itself will be the, uh, this day, okay? So can this be used on any market? Cannot. Because if you anyhow put any market into that, right, you will see that you show that it's not supported. So KFC really need me to sit down and then do all the tabulation and then create this just for you guys to utilize it, okay? So you cannot just randomly put, it doesn't work that way, okay? All right, so I, I hope that today's uh, this sharing for KFC, you can get an idea on that, huh? Okay, so all clear on this, okay? Huh? So we are clear on this, okay? So that's NASDAQ for you for today. Sorry to divert away so much, but that is my point for the NASDAQ today. Let's look at the... Um, S&P now. Now, S&P is now trading much lower. Now, always I say S&P, right? Look at it. Take a look at this. This is S&P chart. Okay, so what we do is that we actually, uh, okay, I just bring this away first. Now, today, you can see that yesterday, the uh, S&P is a doji sign. Now, yesterday, for those who are PTP trained, you will know that yesterday, there is a sell around here, right? For those who are PTP trained, you will know that there's a sell around there at 44.25, around 44.20 area. Let me double check. Yeah, about 20, uh, about the 20, 44.23 area. We did say that uh, if the S&P cannot break above 44.23, the S&P will fall. And now it's trading at 43.83.80. So which means that if you are PTP trained, you will know that 44.23 is a sell signal on S&P. And after that itself, now you're already up by 40 points. That is how crazy it is. I will show it to you live later on. And of course, now the S&P is coming down, right? So there is a possibility for the S&P to drop all the way to 43.62 based on the conventional chart, 43.62 level for the S&P. But once you reach there, right, I suspect there'll be support in the market as usual, okay? So traders be no thing of that. Now, how do I get this 44.23, right? If you are PTP trained, you will know that there is this, the, 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 actually this thing actually exists. So let me show it to you now live. Okay, uh, moment. Uh. One thing about this system is that we cannot identify the TWB system. We have to do it you know, manually. And of course, in between, if I add on some stuff, it may even crazier. So give me a while. Let me just find my charts. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. So now this is the uh, PTP 3.9 indicator. So if I put my S&P chart over, you can see that it auto calculate, right? You see that? Can you see that? So you can see that yesterday, right? If the if you were have you were to have the you will have this uh, version 3.9, you will know that yesterday market goes up, go past 4423, went higher, then U turn come down. Once it goes below this 4423, you can short on the uh, S&P 500. And look at S&P, wow, it just keep on selling until today. So you see, you pay $3,000 for PTP, but then just this trade alone, you may make a lot more money. So that's the reason why 
a lot of students, they see the value of PTP and that's why they know that the certain technical level that Cal has really may work for you. And that is how I show it to you today. Okay. So that one just show you live that how the PTP technique really work. And uh, we just go back again to the SMP, not to diverge too much. So that's first technique level. So for today, SMP 500, right? Let's look at the SMP for today. So today SMP not very nice. We have it now breaks below P2 already. Now the SMP has broke below P2. And I've been telling you guys to be very careful in the US market. Why is that so? Because look at it, this is the KSI. The KSI is a big boys indicator. The last few days, uh, even though the market have been surging higher, right? You notice that the KSI stay red. Now look at it, conventional indicator will stay, will be pointing upwards, but our indicator point red. So that means to tell you that you can buy, no problem but just be careful as it climbs up. And now we can see that the whole impact has come in. The whole impact has came in. And now there is a possibility for the S&P 500 to drop down all the way to this TSCB point. And that's about 4356 level, the number that I just mentioned, okay? 4356 level. So traders be careful. There is a very good possibility for the market to drop down to 43. 56 level okay for the SP 500. All right, so that is all the you all the market. Now let's look back to Hong Kong again. Hong Kong, let's take a look at Hong Kong now. We prospect to Hong Kong. Let's take a look now. Hong Kong this morning, very interesting, very, very choppy. This morning, right? This is probably the one of the incredible move because we have we see the Nasdaq is down, the SP is down, the Dow Jones is down, but the Hang Seng is not moving down, right? So that can I can be very sure that today China A50 is not down already. Oh, it's down. Oh my God, I'm wrong. The China A50 is down. I'm wrong. Okay. So the China A50 has came down to the 61 point level. Oh dear. See, I can be wrong, right? So the thing is that the China A50 is down to 61.8, but the Hong Kong market is not down. So that means someone is really artificially supporting the market in Hong Kong. Someone, I don't know who, but it doesn't matter because I can tell you this, you can support all you want, but there will be a point of, there'll be a breaking point. The more you support, all right, the more money you pour in. And if you keep on pouring in money while the foreign traders are shorting the market or selling the market, right? Eventually one side will pay the price. So I don't know which side will pay the price. We just want to watch it. So my, may I suggest these traders do not get yourself too much involved in the Hang Seng today because the Hang Seng like that is going to be very scary. There are so many people buying. You see that? Look at the way it flip out and down. That means there's a lot of buyers trying to keep on buying while the generally the bigger market is selling. This is very, very scary. Okay, it really remind me of what happened in 1987. Of course, by the time I was still very, very young. So maybe not 1997, how about that? Uh, that is whereby, you know, the Asia, Asia financial crisis where the market keep on selling off. Yeah, something along that direction. Okay, so that is the Hang Seng. So let's look at the Nikkei now. I just saw Colin, Colin say that. Huh? Colin says that the Nikkei touching previous low soon, is it? Okay, let's take a look at Nikkei now. Wow, look at Nikkei. Wow, Nikkei is a very clear doji, doji directional day. Look at the Nikkei. Now today's Nikkei, the MLP will be here, right? So the Nikkei opens already below MLP, straight away goes down. And of course, we all, I said that, right? Nikkei will come down to this point. Yesterday, I already say Nikkei, if come down, will come down to this point. Yesterday, I draw this level. And now the Nikkei is really going there. So there's a very fine good chance that Nikkei will trade 27,241 later today. All right, pretty confident uh, on this happening. Okay, so proven again, all the technical analysis that I've been saying seemingly seem to be able to manifest. Okay, so let's see whether Nikkei will do that. So you look at the Nikkei day chart today. Let's look at Nikkei now. You see Hang Seng trying to, to bring up again. Okay, now this is Nikkei. You can see that the Nikkei chart shows you very clearly all the way Nikkei is a sell. Okay, and if the, when the KSI is read together, the sell will be even stronger. For PTP student, remember this is what we call a higher low formation. When it's a higher low formation with the KSI rate, it's a sell signal. So that's why today Nikkei is a sell. So you see everything start to fall into place. Everything shows that why market come down, why market go up. There's always reason for everything. You just have to believe in whatever you see right in front of you. Okay, will BOJ come and save the world? I don't know, but today Nikkei is also inverted. Look at it. Today Nikkei is also an inverted pivot. 
So inverted pivot means that if the market goes below OP, it will go towards to the next to the pivot point. And you can see it really draw like a magnet towards the pivot one. So all these are incredible stuff that as long as you're PTP, sorry, you're PTP trained or TWB trained, you will know what to do. Okay, so I've covered all the indices. Oh, I said DEX, sorry, my bad. Okay, let's look at DEX. Now DEX is incredible. DEX actually now yesterday stays above the MA30 and that's why DEX went up yesterday. So today the DEX number apparently is the same number, 15,572. So I write it down for you again, remind you. Today DEX figure is 15,572. That is the very important technical level for DEX. If DEX stays above it, DEX will still go up. But with the market now looking at the way Dow Jones, Nasdaq coming down, right, I think it'll be very tough. So if it comes down, where can it go, right? Well, if the market really comes down, well, there is a small possibility that the market will come down to this point because this is a previous low that was touched and recovered. So the market may come out to this point, 15,418 level, so to find some support. Okay, so watch out for that for today, the uh, DEX. All right, so we have uh, covered all the indices. Let's just look at the commodities right now. Okay, this is gold. Now, yesterday we already tell you why in gold break 1809, gold will go up. And I also tell you that if gold break 1809, it will go to 1829. Correct? Or not? I said that yesterday, right? I said that if gold break 1809, gold will go up to 1829. Okay, so if you remember that I said that, please key correct. <laughs> okay, just don't, don't need to put spot on. Uh. Okay, just put correct. Okay, C O R R E C T. Okay, I'll put up my, my battery running up on. Uh. All right, thank you. So you guys already remember that I said that if gold break 1809, you go to 1829, and indeed it really happened. So now it hit my 1829, what's next? Well, nothing, nothing more. We just have to wait and take a look. If the goal can stay above 1829, then the next level that goal will be going will be 1836. 1836. Now 1836 is the 38.2 of the Fibonacci. Okay, it will be going there, 1836. But the ultimate level that I believe gold will be going over here. That is 1859. So my, my, my point is this. If later on gold has any buying opportunity, if there is one, look out for a buy and maybe gold will be going towards 1859. Gold will be going to 1859. Yeah, traders, you should look out for that 1859. Okay, well, today so many people inside the MAO today. Why? Uh? Normally we are lesser than 50, but today so many 78 already still running up. <laughs> okay, all right. Why well, today Friday? Everybody got in the mood. <laughs> Okay, so 1859 level. This is something to watch out for, okay, for gold. Weekly chart, the market cross 1820. So that's very important. 1820 will be the key pivotal point, the, best, the very important support level. All right, the only thing that I want to stress is that if there is going to be any heavy sell-off in the equity market, there is a chance for gold to just pull down on that factor. Then after that, it may just trigger and then rebound again. So for those who are holding gold for long term, can I uh, suggest to you? Now, of course, it's always a chicken and thingy. If you actually now don't take profit now, you will put a, you put an SWL uh, very nearby, very near to the to the entry price or a midpoint, then there is a possibility that the market may just hit you and then go up again. All right, it may happen like this. So that's why if you want to believe that the gold will go all the way up to one eight fifty nine. Then maybe you can just take partial profit here first. And one in 27, one in 28, take some partial profit first. So you lock down some profit. Then after that, you just shift your stop loss slightly above your entry price. Let's say you buy at 1801, 1802 now, right? Now it's like $20 in profit. I understand it's quite a bit of buffer there, but you can consider to just take some profit first at this point, shift your stop loss to above entry price and let it there. If the market is really weak, you may really come down all the way to your entry price. And if you come to the entry price, that means that the market is really, really, really weak. It may actually flush you off. But if let's say the market is not weak, it's just a temporary, momentary uh, pullback. 
Then you put a stop loss near to entry price, but must be positive entry price. Then of course, you don't know, you worry. You got my point? Yeah. So Cal, what's your feel on the goal? Will it really be going to 1859? Well, I repeat myself one more time. I say this, I kind of suspect that goal will pull back a bit today because the equity market may actually come down. Then after that, it may stabilize and then it will go. This is what I'm seeing. Now this will take maybe the next five, six days, five to seven days, huh? trading days of course. Okay, to reach this point. Now today is the 30th of July, right? So that means that the next five to seven trading days, then maybe we will see the goal going up to 1859. But prior to that, I suspect that there'll be some intermittent pullback first. Are we clear with this? All right, clear with this. If all are clear, please key the word goal 1859 so that everybody can remind yourself that um, if goal stays above uh, the 1829, then we can see 1859. And this is not just because it's a $30 movement, no, it's just because I'm based on chart. And where I get the chart from again, this is the KCB level. Okay, 1859. Are we clear? Yeah, 1859. Okay, wow, today you guys are so interactive. It's kind of cool though. <laughs> ah, you are making me very happy today. Seriously, thank you so much. Okay, so let's continue. All right, look at the goal chart today. This is the goal day chart. Ah, see, that's a problem already. Can you see that? Now we have a problem because the opening price for today is actually below pivot two. Mm, now we have a problem. The opening price is already below pivot two. So which means that below OP, CCYR is a sell. Below OP, CCYR is a sell. Okay, the thing is the opposite side is that there's no blue bar at the bottom, meaning the market is very bullish. The KSI is green, that means the market is bullish. So now we have a bit of problem here. Based on rule, below OP, CCYR, we sell, right? All the inter, uh, intraday, we can sell. But because the blue bars are there, the KSI are there, it's there, right? So I'll give you a suggestion. If the goal, if you don't want to short goal, okay, those who have long goal already since yesterday, you can take partial profit first, okay? Take partial profit first. Only if gold stays above, only if gold stays above the pivot two, then you go and buy more gold, okay? Clear? Now, the thing is, you notice that now it's flickering between the, the purple, the, the, the pink and the white, right? Because when it's below OP, it will show you this pink line. When you go above OP, it enter the, the neutral zone. When it goes above the blue line, it become yeah, become pivot two, right? Become a blue line. So at the moment now, you can see over here, it is very clear that uh, the market now it is uh, showing the market has a buying signal, but based on technique, it's a sell. So for those who want to short the market, right? If you want to short the market, remember I told you about the KTR rule. When you go to KTR minus one, do consider the buyback your position. Then for those who want to buy, right? I won't suggest you to buy here because why? Because it's below pivot two. So don't do that. For buyer, don't try to buy at minus one. Don't try to do that. Wait for it to go up. Wait for it to go above OP, then above pivot two, then you buy gold. Can we do that? Because you don't want to buy a falling knife. The market may fall further, may fall further, right? Even though by right, the KSI and the blue bars are there, but you cannot really, you know, uh, you know, uh, expect that the market have to rebound with that, all right? Especially if let's say globally, the financial market sells, right? Then there will be some liquidity crunch. And when that happens, whichever market have been going up, right? They usually will take profit on them, okay? Clear? Now this is silver. Now silver, I told you, you can buy silver and silver yesterday shoot up all the way to $25.60, wonderful. But the problem comes in, the moment it goes to the MA30, it got rejected. So that's why today, right, the very critical part for silver will be here. Silver had to cross the MA30 mark, and the MA30 mark happened to be $25.58. So only if the silver can cross the MA30, uh, then it will go towards $26.24 for the silver price. Okay? Okay? Okay, got it clear? This is the level to watch out for silver. So silver need to watch out for these two numbers, very critical. And for today's silver, the day chart 
uh, is different. The day chart is different from gold. Uh. You realize that today's the gold silver day chart is different. Silver today is here CCRY. And as long as it stays above OP, right, today's silver will go up. But because silver have a KSI rate, but no blue bars at the bottom, it's kind of mixed signal, right? I still believe that if silver can stay above OP, silver will still go back up today and the target between $6 and 5 cents. So those who are in long in silver, you can look out for silver to buy as long as it stays above OP today. Okay, so that is silver. Okay, so now I have, uh, I already got this uh, information that China A50 had dropped below the 14966 level. Let's take a look. Oh, okay, it yeah, went below. Eh? Okay, it went below, but look at Hong Kong. Hong Kong is staying up. <laughs> so you see, guys, you cannot really utilize that. Well, China A50 is down, Hong Kong must be down to me. Because normally it is like that. But if there's somebody supporting it, right, then it will be a different story. So it's very, very clear today, Hong Kong has someone very strongly supporting it. I don't know who would that, who is that, but I, we don't want to get involved. That is the main thing here. Something is definitely very wrong today on the Hong Kong side. Okay, guys, uh, look at the Nikkei. Are they done really? Sorry. All right, I've done all my part. Crude oil, sorry, my bad. Now, crude oil yesterday climbs above the MA30, climbs above it, and that's why crude oil went to $73, right? So I told you crude oil will go up. I already tell you crude oil will go up to $74. I already say it will go up, so it likely will be happening. So how do I know it will go up again? Remember, I told you this is a BNB, right? So the structure is it will go up to another BNB. So that's about $74, okay? So to be precise, it's $74.20, okay? I believe that gold, uh, crude oil will go up to that point. So when we call for buy, it was $72.20, okay? So now we're looking for crude oil. So crude oil, that is upside. Then for crude oil, day chart today, uh, everything's okay. KSI is green in color. And um, this uh, uh, bus is all yellow. Everything's okay. Just that if we look OP right now, we have to wait for a while. Okay, so we have all the numbers all clear. Okay, guys, I have completed all the technical analysis. Today, we drag a little bit longer because we covered KFC, but I'm sure you guys have got all the information you need right now. Okay, so we are going to go back into fundamental. So if you guys are interested in fundamentals, you can stay on. If you think that you're hurt enough, you want to take a break right now, go ahead, okay? We're going to fundamental right now. Okay, so let's go back to fundamental. Let's take a look. Okay, disclaimer as usual, because I don't want you guys to, you know, get to to you must make sure that you must know whatever I share is based on my personal opinion. Okay. All right, quote of the day for successful trader: he who knows when he can fight and when he cannot will be victorious. I think this is a very, very, very powerful statement. Yes, by Sun Tzu. All right, meaning right, when you know that you can win, you go for it. But when you know that the market now, the condition is not meant for you, you don't want to get involved. And that's the reason why we need to know where we are. So it's a very, very important quote outside trading world. Essentially, by knowing when to trade and when not to trade, you will be successful. I think that's a key point, all right? So we have studied the charts for today already. But today we look at the earnings now. We have all finished the, uh, the earnings, all these counters. Today we have is uh, ExxonMobil, Caterpillar, PNG. Chevron, we have a few, these are all crude oil related companies. So I cannot, I, I cannot deny that there is a small suspicious that the crude oil price may be going higher to help this company to do something better. There is a small suspicious on that. All right, so Susan will go live every day, do not Monday to Friday, every day from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And of course, every evening, every alternate evening, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So today's Friday, so Susan will go live later on at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., okay? All right, now we are going to revise our price to 2888. This is the last day of the week for trading day. Of course, a two more calendar day for today and tomorrow. But still, guys, if your price will increase, bring your friends in because they really, I'm very sure if they come in at 1688 this time around and they got all the information that you hear from us the last two days, I'm pretty sure they can make back a lot of cost fee easily. So traders, consider bring your friends in before the price revision, okay? Kevin, the gold KFC shift dates from 26 July to 5th August to 11th August. 
Yes, I say this, uh, Kevin, the KFC, the chief price is because they, in terms of calculation, because when we do the, the number, it was based on the dates, based on the dates that during a period. But during a period of time, there is Saturday, Sunday, thingy. that's why the dates actually shifted a little bit. So that's the reason why we will show you the dates on the day itself, because this is something that it moves together. Then this is something that uh, we are trying to resolve this. So just take note of that. Huh? The this does shift in terms of not because of the like changing it is because of the weekends. Yeah, I think that we have resolved that problem already with the latest uh, update. So we will test it out and it should be fine. Okay, Kevin. Okay, huh? All right. That's why we say that we only give it to the PDP students so that they will not be uh, using it uh, wrongly and then get hit. Yeah, but of course on the day itself we will purposely show it in our group chats just to for everybody's sake. Yeah. All right. Huh? Because when I give to the programmer, I told him this day, this day. Then after the programmer forgot that Saturday, Sunday is actually, it's also uh, actually a trading, it's not a trading day. So theoretically, it must take out. But it's not so simple because every month got different Saturday, Sunday. You notice that, right? <laughs> In a way, some months got, 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 got four, mostly four pairs, but some can be five pairs. So that is the thing that's a little bit difficult for the programmer. But I think the programmer has solved it already. Okay. Now, Thursday, yesterday, we have not very nice data. The worst thing that happened is you can see this. Uh, look at it. The GDP was expecting to be 8.6, 8.5, sorry. But the market came out 6.5. Oh, my goodness. So you're talking about supposed to be a quarter whereby all the banks are doing, all the companies are doing very well, everybody doing very well. Then why all oh, suddenly your number is so bad? Down by 2%, no? I mean, seriously? <laughs> To be off by 2% is a lot. Eh? It's really a lot. Then, of course, the initial jobless claim, supposed to be 380,000, now become 400,000, which means that more people actually is jobless. I thought the stock market is doing very well. I thought the whole market is doing very well. Why is that so? And, of course, the home sales. Oh, my goodness. The home sales is supposed to be good, should be positive, but the number came out minus 1.9%. So, which means that right, home sales are not performing. That means the economy is not recovering as fast as it's supposed to be. So actually, yesterday was a very bad, 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 bad day. But did the market go up? Yes, the market went up. So that's the reason why I say the market is filled with the money that you cannot imagine. And because of that of crazy insanity of money involved in the market, right? Undeniable that the market is going to go up regardless. So if there's going to be any pullback in August, once it pull back enough, I tell you this, you should buy into the market because the market will likely rebound. So that is really fundamentally tell you that fundamental is really not really essential when it comes to the market when there's outright manipulation, okay? All right, so the Dow Jones you can see yesterday is still up, 153 points. So the market news was bad, but the market still go up. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. As long as I have the money to buy, I don't care, I don't bother. So that's why climb, the Dow Jones climbed 150 points despite, despite the investors look past weak economic data do you think that investors will look past weak economic data? I don't think so. It's only because the Federal Reserve or someone bigger came to buy. So you say investors struck off economic data. Really? Will investors struck off economic data? Seriously? So you can see that the market was expecting an 8.4% by the Dow Jones estimate. But the problem is that the market came out at 6.5. It's drastic. But a number of 400,000 people found a job instead of the 385. So all these numbers shows that the number market is not performing well. And oh, but the thing is this, Jerome Powell and Ray say, we will not do any tapering. So with that itself, right, we can see very clearly with Jerome Powell signaling that two days ago. So this tells you that the market will still go up. So no matter how the market drop, the buyers will come in. You realize that it's going to be like that. So that is something that you must take note of that. Okay, very, very important. So let's just recap on Dow Jones again. Yesterday, the Dow Jones opening price was between the pivot one and pivot two. The KSI is green in color. So as long as the Dow Jones stays above OP, it will generally be upside movement. And you can see that the market stays up all the way. But one, and you can see because the KSI is green in color, right? So if the market stays above OP, it will go up to KTR plus one. And you can see it really purposely go there, touch base and pull back. But once it pull back, right, it maintained itself above the it maintained the BNB SL level, the price go back again, only towards the last hour or last two hours, there was some selling. There was some selling last two hours, uh, but that's it. Okay, but overall itself, the market is still kind of, okay? 
So that is what's happening right now in the market. Okay, I just... Uh, okay. Okay, all right. Okay, so that is what happened. And um, this is the Dow Jones yesterday. The goal was even clearer. Yesterday, we have all the buy reason for gold. All right, the market have a BMB on the day chart. We have the CC, uh, the KRL broke out. We have the pivot point buying with the KSI green, with the blue bus turning up. So all these are the real reason why gold yesterday goes up. And of course, gold goes exactly to the point I mentioned, 1829. And that's based on what we can see, right? Very beautiful. So intraday wise, remember what's the rule of the game? When the market is above OP and above pivot one, what do we do? We have only one thing to do, right? It's above OP, above pivot one, buy. Buy, 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 buy. See that? Above OP, above pivot one. I already say this many, many, many times. As long as the market stays above OP and above pivot one, traders should stay on the buy side. And that's why yesterday people ask me, Cal can short gold. I say, no, you can't short gold because yesterday is a classic buy. You can't do that. Okay. So that is how you can use the trade, the TWB system. And I told you already, TWB system, the most powerful two setups, if you ask me itself, is above OP, above pivot one, CCRY buy. Below OP, below pivot two, CCYR sell. Remember this two liner enough already. As long as you have these two liners in your, in your, in, you remember these two liners, I can tell you this, the chance of you making money on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be very, very high. Okay, clear? All right, so that what happened to the goal is today. So let's go to the local news right now. The local news here that the Amazon has posted the third hundred billion quarter, but misses expectation, I told you that earlier. And you can see that this what happened to Amazon. Now the Amazon share price was okay, uh, was down before the, the earnings. And once the earnings came out, bang, the price came down by, down by about 4 to 7%. That's the reason why you can see that some selling in the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones this morning. But now we can see that the Dow Jones is recovering a little bit already. So we will see how it goes, but that is what's happening to the, net, the Amazon. Okay. Now the pending home sale, I told you, right, the drop is really not good. So it's supposed to be a, expected to be a good one, but apparently, right, the signed contract actually went down. And what's the reason? Because the market price is too high. Because the thing is this, you keep on having the price going higher and higher and higher, and people don't really make the type of money to, to, comp to, to, to cover it. Then of course, the, when you get too high, right, the price doesn't make sense. So you can, you can do a lot of homes for available, but if no one, no buyers, right, the company will go bankrupt. And the buyers, if they see that, wow, the price is going so fast, right, who want to buy? So if all this reason, right, this caused people not to look to buy. Okay, that is the reason why home prices actually came down yesterday. Okay, now local news and global news again, we have COVID. Okay, now of course COVID side itself, I'm not going to cover Singapore, but Japan, you can see that, right? There are more people getting sick from the virus. And of course in uh, Malaysia, we have a new case, new record again, 17,000 new cases. Now I, don't, I think you guys have been seeing that some videos ongoing on TikTok, right? About the jabs being taken and they, 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 don't, they don't even punch in. They even don't string in the so-called the medicine. It's just only poking the needle in and it's it's done. It's very scary when you do that. But again, you cannot argue this is their own country. But you look at it, UK is interesting. Now UK is supposed to have some uptake, right? But suddenly UK now, right? The number of people that fall having the COVID has dropped dramatically. Wow, interesting, right? So this tells you that this is actually showing that maybe we are right. Maybe the UK has the idea to solve this problem. So. Well, Asia is having a lot of problem, but seemingly UK is getting less of this. So maybe we need to find again to find out more. Okay, so this is very interesting numbers. Huh? Okay, so what are the reasons to stay bullish for today? A couple of charts to show you. Number one, we can see that the Beijing national team, aka Punch Protection Team, came in to surface to buy down the market. Now, I just saw the market now trading higher. Let's bring the market in. Okay, uh, let's bring a chart right now. Let's uh, take a look. The China A50 has rebounded off from the from the 61.1499 level. And um, the Hong Kong, wow, Hong Kong is up. 
wow, Hong Kong is up already. Hong Kong is up to the high of the day. So initially Hong Kong was down, right? But now Hong Kong is up again. So that's why I think I told you earlier, if the market just cannot go down, right? Something is definitely very wrong. And is the US market going up? I think I saw it recovering a little bit, right? Let's take a look. Huh? Here we go. Wow, look at it. I told you, right? The Dow Jones come down all the way. It came down and very beautifully, we have a BNB right here. And the market hit the BNB. And then after that hit the KTR minus one, I told you, it rebounded. So the, that's how we're talking about this, that the Dow will recover when it hit KTR minus one. And you see that life really, really happened. Don't you find it's very amazing? How do the market know that this KTR minus one in the market? That's why I say our system really, really is a world beater if we know how to utilize it in the right way. Okay, so we have the plunge protection team. Okay, so Carl says that uh, neutralized immunity, many infected now develop immunity, okay? So recovered from the, vir or the virus and now back to work, wow. So that means that the vaccine is working already. Good, good, good. That's a good news for all of us. Okay, so what you saw is that the, uh, thank you Carl for sharing. Okay, now you can see over here that this is what happened in the uh, yesterday's uh, Chinese market, the recovery. And of course you can see the Chinese Yuan also recovers strongly, look at it, wow. One day of selling, two days, three days, four days, five days, five days of selling, one single day, they ram it up. <laughs> you see that, five days, no? One, two, three, four. Four days or five days of selling, one single day they ram it up. That is the power of funds. When the government come in, please don't fight. Really, it's just like the Federal Reserve come in to buy. You don't need to fight with them. You cannot win. I tell you that you cannot win. So that's how it is. And that's the reason why, remember, when the China A50 came down, I told you guys to buy back your position because I know that likely the market will rebound. And whether it's technical 61.8, whether it's because of funds buying, we all know that the number is when the market comes down to those level, the market will go up. This is something that you cannot run away, okay? And of course, very incredibly, at the same time, the US dollar plunged. <laughs> so the US dollar plunged, oh my God, look at the way it plunged. So that's the reason why yesterday gold goes up because the US dollar plunged. So what is happening right now? Because the economy in US is not doing well. And of course now we know tapering, that means that there means that there'll be more dollar flooding the market every month. So that is the reason why the dollar is coming down. So it makes a lot of sense right now. So everything is able to you know explain itself. So would the dollar go down further? Well, as long as Jerome Powell and team still want to do the uh, continue at the QE QE four, then of course the dollar will still continue to go down. Okay. All right. So we have almost come to the end of the MEO. This is the last part itself. This is the point whereby I told you guys to stay tuned because I'm going to go the last chart. Last part is where I show you the SMP chart compared to the post SMP, post FOMC chart. And you must really look at it and you will know when to buy into the market. Okay. All right. So let's go. Now, first of all, this is the SMP chart. You can see that this SMP chart. But notice that as the SMP is going upwards, right? The money flow chart is showing the other way around. So which means that, right, the people that are actually, the smart funds are actually getting out of the market, but the market is going up. So what is that, that what could only have been happening? That means that the only one buying is some other people who really perpetually want to buy regardless, but the remaining people are actually taking advantage of the upside to take profit. Can you understand that? So which means that if someone like a big boy, AKA Federal Reserve, keep on buy, 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 buy. You have one side is buying and the price will go higher. But because at the same time when you are buying, right, the remaining traders know that you are buying and I want to be a seller, they will dump. So the market money flow is other people. The other people that is buying or selling, they are actually liquefying the position. So this is not very good. This is actually a very unhealthy sign. So this is from uh, Santoli. This is nothing to do with him, but I just bring it up for you. He felt that right, the market participation is lacking and when only a minority of stocks are rising, confirming the rally, okay? And he says that, right, the market is too dependent on the big five Nasdaq giants, which is the Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, okay? These are the giants that are holding on the market. 
and he felt that the confidence of the investors is too much and everybody's not on running on speculative flow. So which means that if the market really one day lose confidence and the market no longer buy on big five, then seriously, with the lack of participation, in general speaking, the market may sell. Okay, this is from Santoli, right? This is a CNBC correspondent. So look at the 10-year yield. Look at it. Very interesting. Look at the 10-year yield. Every time the 10-year yield come down to about 1.23% uh, for the last six days, uh, every time it hit that rebound, every time it hit that rebound, okay? It's as if like they, 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 they know what to do. So there's two ways to look at it. Number one is that now we have the yields go up or the dollar goes down. It doesn't make sense, but it doesn't matter. So what if the dollar continue to go down, right? Then the yield will go up again. And if the yield goes up again, that will create the inflation problem again. And again, people get stressed again. And then again, the stock market may pull. But of course, they may actually bring out the yield again to bring it down to calm the market. But I say again, you can see the chart shows you repeatedly, right? The same way of trading. So usually we see this, we know what will happen very soon, right? There's only two ways the market can go. One, the market crash down. Two, the market shoot up. So I'm pretty sure that we can see I don't think we'll see 1.2. I don't think so. Because if it has happened, right, the last few days, we've seen it already. So if you ask me, right, the probability of 1.32 is higher. Okay, 1.32 is higher. So what could we lead to that, right? Yeah, because of the dollar weakening, the inflation goes up, people get worried, sentiment reduced, and of course, you have the sellers as usual. Okay, all right. So that is what I'm seeing on the market right now. Now, this is the best chart that you all are looking for. Right? Look at it. Yesterday, gold go up, right? Yesterday, gold went up. But look at the yield because the yield went up also, right? The yield went up, right? So you can see that, right? This is what's happening right now. The yield actually pulled back down yesterday. A little bit pulled down, okay? And then it's happening. But the gold went up. So the thing is this, logically, the, the, real, yield, the real yield inverted should go with the gold, right? But apparently, they have diverged each other. So now I told you there's a possibility that the yield will come down. So let's say we look at this. Huh? So you see, huh, guys, my watch this. Huh? So the real yield actually went up yesterday, right? So that's why the inverted yield goes down yesterday. Can you see that? So if we suspect that the this will go higher, example, this will go higher, then what will happen to this side? This side will go lower. Okay, this side will go lower. Now, if that happened, right, okay, I suspect the gold price will go higher because why? If the real yield actually goes higher, it's because they are afraid that there'll be inflation. Okay, uh, because when real goes higher, inflation will creep in, and that's why the gold may be buying up to anticipate that. And plus, I say the money flows shows that the market buyers are only one group of people buying. So people are not smart. The smarter money will know that maybe it's time to protect themselves. They may buy gold in advance. So I kind of suspect that what will likely be happening is that the real yield will drop, inverted real yield drop, and the gold price will go up. So the midpoint will be here, about 1880 level. Okay, so I believe that gold price, the, the midpoint will be 1880, but we know at 1859 will be the first level to watch out for for gold. So if gold is to go up first, 1859. And if 1859 really stabilize, then we may see 1880. Okay, guys, clear on this. Yeah, correct. My chart showed that the yields will break up. So you will see that the real yield inverted will come down and the gold price will go up. So you're going to be a, this, this, this thing. There will be a, this interesting movement here. Okay, can I understand my point? Yeah, okay. Yeah? So that is what I'm seeing. Because you must understand that this chart itself, the OMO element is inflation, right? OMO chart is inflation. So if the market suspect that there'll be inflation, the goal will go up by itself. So that's why it's kind of, kind of complicated. If you don't really see the point of the entire spectrum, right? You will feel that how can it be? It should be this one go higher, this one go higher. Not necessary. It will actually, why it diverge will be the reason why it come back down. That is a key point, yeah? So Fred, hope I, I answer you, but of course, we let the charts decide, we let the market tell you whether I'm right or wrong later part, okay? All right, this is the one that we're all waiting for, right? This is the one that we are talking about, okay? That uh, the post FOMC meeting. So everybody now focus that after FOMC meeting, you see that the last four meeting, the market will pull back down, right? So we do suspect that the S&P may follow. But what is more important for today is that for people who want to buy, I want you to focus on the why did the market recover? Why and how the market recovered at every time, okay? 
So I want to show you live right now how to do that. So let's just focus this properly. We do it step by step. Okay, so um, okay, I'm gonna do a one a one or two times, and you can do it on your own already. Okay, so let's just uh, I use a very simple conventional chart so that you guys can can easier to relate uh. Okay, so well, now we have is the SMP chart. Okay, so let's look at January this year, January towards the end. Huh? So, January, we move to the January chart. Can you see that? Okay, huh? so you can see that this is how the January, sorry, my bad. Okay, this is the January movement. Now, this point here is this point here can you see that okay the sell down will be where we are now this chart on the left side is the closing is line is linear is a is a line chart right so it's based on closing okay it's based on closing so what do you see from here okay the pattern First of all, you notice that when the market after the FOMC meeting, after that, there'll be a couple of days, about four days, one, two, three, four, four days of sell off. And there'll be very heavy selling. Now, when do I know where's the bottom, right? It's only when you see the market purposely, purposely break the low of each bar. Then after that, a long tail come in and then the market stays above OP. And from then on, generally speaking, that's how it buy up. And if actually your PTP train, if your PTP train, you will know that there is a technical level here, which your PTP train, you'll know that that it actually replicated again. Okay, in PTP level, you will learn this, correct? PTP seven, yeah. So that is my first wave movement. Okay, got the idea now? Okay, I try this again now. Everybody look at it. Huh? I try one more time. You can figure it yourself. The next FOMC meeting was actually at, during the March, early March, right? So we moved back to early March. Can you see that? So in early March after the FOMC, do you notice something interesting again? Number one, this is the FOMC meeting. Then after that, what happened? The market came down, right? The market came down. One, two, three, four. And also what happened, you can see very clearly, okay, very clearly, the market has a very long tail, okay? And then after that, stays above opening price, and that's where the market goes up again. Can you see that? Very, very interesting um, pattern. And can you see that? Yeah, okay. So this is what happened to the market. So you got an idea now? Okay, uh, so I'm now gonna move it a bit more to this side. Okay, the next one, this is on in during April, uh, near to the end of April, near to the end of April. So I move to the end of April, end of April. Can you see that? End of April, we saw the same phenomena again. So after the FOMC meeting, one, two, three, four. Also a very long tail day. Then after that itself, for those who are PTP trained, you notice that this is a technical level based on KSL, if you cannot see that. And after that, straight away, the market rebounded. The market rebounded. Can you see that? After that, the market rebounded all the way up. You got the idea now? Quite interesting, right? What you're seeing right now. So the last one in June, uh, in the early June, can you see that? In early June, do you notice that? The, after the FOMC, the market dropped one, two, three, four. 
<laughs> Something familiar, right? Then after that, a long tail came down, reversal, stays above the OP, and then what happened? Wow, look at the market. The market just shoot up. The market just shoot up. Okay, guys. So I think you have heard me throughout the session and we have just completed the last FOMC meeting. So I think that you don't need to ask me, you probably know that what am I looking at for in the next few days. Now, of course, nothing is for sure. History may not repeat, but should it repeat, we will know what to do. So traders, just take note of what I just say to you. If you cannot really capture it, you can just play back the tape again and later on you see. So as long as you follow the rule, right, you will be able to likely see this and you will know when to buy for this again. Okay, there is a possibility of this happening because history has proven it is possible. But of course, Cal, could this be the turning point the market will collapse? I don't know. I cannot tell you at the moment now. I can tell you this, we have seen the post FOMC meeting and what happened the, the next few days and then what will happen to lead the market up again. Uh, this is my point of sharing you for this PowerPoint presentation, okay? So if you like this uh, this sharing, please keep the word like, L-I-K-E, so that at least I know that all my hard work is appreciated by you guys. And also, as I like, I'll tell you, tell you guys again, the market itself today is Friday. This is the last trading day. Uh, whether or not the market will go down, I don't know. But as long as the rules say sell, we stay sell. If the rules say buy, we stick to the buy side, okay? That is the more important thing for today. That is my point. My job is just tell you all this. You do your final work, okay? All right, that'll be all for today. Thank you very much for today. That's a very good F F M uh, MAO session. I hope you like it. All right, appreciate that. Have a great day. Uh, we'll see you guys on Monday MAO. Okay.